All right, so just a quick update on what's going on here at Crafted Word Bookbinding. Uh, one of the main machines I was waiting for to come in came in today. This is an industrial leather skiving machine. So when you see, um, and this is just some examples that they used the machine before they sent it, because they assembled most of it, and then I had to assemble the rest of it. But most of it's done for you, which is nice. Um, down here's the servo motor. You got right there. Nice motor, really good motor. Uh, it's a 110 volt motor, and you do you can dial in your settings on the the power of the motor. Um, excuse the mess in here; it's been crazy, and I'm just trying to get everything organized. But you can see I was working on blue leather earlier just to test it out. Here's your foot pedal. It's got a fuse up there. Let's see. It's got a fuse up here. Then your on and off switch, which I don't have plugged in right now because I have to rearrange this room. Um, <clears throat> But what this will allow me to do is, say you're looking at these, uh, this is what they would use in, in factories making Bibles like this to scave their leather. Of course, I'd be using a lot higher quality goat skin than this stuff, but even though this is pretty good for, uh, thumbs up to Zondervan. They did a great job. Uh, Thomas Nelson Zondervan are really knocking out of the park. <clears throat> so I'm not saying it's bad quality, but the leather I'm using is a lot better quality. In fact, I'll, oh, then... Uh, that's, that's about one third of the tools, uh, I have, I have a bunch of different tools and I'm going to go over that some other time. Um, I would say if you're starting in leather craft, go ahead and get you some of these no cut gloves. Cause I, I don't, I haven't cut myself in a long time and I only, I, I probably won't use these as, that often, but when you're dealing with surgical scalpels on certain parts of leather crafting and your fingers next to it is, it could it'd be a good idea if you're starting off to uh, put those on if you're able to work with gloves on. But I really don't use them. I just have them just in case I need them. Uh, somebody had asked me, I think I posted a picture. They're like, why do you have your sushi knife up there? I was like, to keep it away from the kids. So I have magnetic strips for a lot of the stuff. Because I'll be doing wallets and, and belts that are faith-based too with scripture on them or personalized, you know, stuff like that. <clears throat> and I'll get into tools and stuff later. But as far as leather is concerned, I've got... River grain goat skin, Harmington goat skin, which I found out it's not too great for covers, but it's way more expensive than this stuff. Uh, it's a very nice leather. It just would make it much better for a liner, so I'll probably end up using that for a liner. Uh, I got about 20 something square feet of this really thick goat skin that I can now use without stretching the leather, which is a problem because if, if you're hand skiving it on a hand skiving machine, which is not a, it's not, doesn't use electricity. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So say you're using one of these machines and you're pulling it, the leather through here to skive it. If you pull too hard and that blade's not sharp enough, you can stretch the leather where you can't do the fold over. It, it just won't fold over. It'll, you'll have problems. So that's where this machine comes into play. I won't have that problem, but I'll be able to do, my turnaround rate will be a lot faster using this than uh other Bible rebinders out there. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying that's why I got it. Is I'm trying to do really good rebinds, which for the most part will be the river grain goat skin with lambskin liner, different colors, of course. But I can adjust this, keep the settings there, and go through covers like crazy and get a lot of rebinds done in a short period of time without losing any quality. In fact, this is better than, well, in certain ways, because part of it will be hand done with um, uh, uh, like this knife, uh, actually the, the sharp parts at the tip, this is for cutting out leather, or I can use a surgical scalpel. Um, and then the charter made, this thing's awesome. Uh, I got two of these. Uh, this one was made from a different company. They clone each other there in China. This one is not near as sharp as this one. This one's a great knife. In fact, I can get it as sharp as this one. It just doesn't keep the edge. This one doesn't keep the edge like this one does. So, and there's some other leather tools, all that stuff. I got my iPad Pro. My kid built me, one of my sons built me this little, he saw me making stuff, so he's got to make something for me to put pins in. Um, I got some pricking forks in here for uh, um, stitching Bibles. So I will be doing hand stitching or I will be doing uh, on a machine. This is a, a Singer. I'm not gonna take the cover off right now. 
Uh, I do have a bulk of paper, which that's what's wrapped around a Bible. And then I'm also doing it in a, in a cellophane. I have um, the sealer here so I can put the Bible in cellophane. That way it trains the app while it's in delivery, but also keeps it watertight so moisture won't, won't hurt anything when it's in shipment. And then I got some of this uh, fancy pre-cut gold gilled and uh, black paper to put in with the Bible to kind of support it. And on top of that, it will be wrapped in black paper with a seal that says Crafted Word, which I'm waiting for those seals to come in. A little uh, uh, sticker. Uh, so kind of give it some, make it look elegant, make it look real nice. Because if people are going to pay a certain amount for a Bible that's rebound, I want it to be, uh, I want it to come to them with an unboxing experience. Overall, just wonderful experience. In fact, tomorrow I'll be working on this Bible here, New American Standard Bible Finline Large Print. Great for preaching. And uh, it's got like a 10.5 font. Reads like a 12, though. It's really awesome. And I also have a King James. Uh, let's see here. King James Preaching Bible. I'll be rebinding. And both of these will be done in black. Um, River Grain Goat Skin with a Lambskin Liner. So if you're looking for a Bible to preach from and one of you uses the NASB and the other one uses the King James, let me know. Uh, and I'll let you know when those are done. And I'll do a video review of them so that way you can look at them in, in detail. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, just besides that, just a bunch more tools. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it, guys. But I wanted to show you this. This is very important because this is going to allow my turnaround rate. Uh, to be v extremely fast. I get covers done without losing any quality, anything like that. So, and these things, this, this was uh, actually bought for me, which was such a blessing. This is just insane because overall with the shipping and everything, it was like $1,600, about $1,700. It's an industrial machine. It comes with a table and stuff. Very, very expensive. Um, see, what else can I say, guys? Um, not much right now. Uh, after I get this room cleaned out and it's more organized and there's not trash all over the floor because I'm moving stuff around, I'm going to do a complete, uh, oh, I got it, my gold gilding machine, but it's dirty over there. I don't want to show that yet. Otherwise, my wife would kill me. But um, I'll show you all the rest of my stuff after it's organized. It looks better in here and it's not just a bunch of tables that are unorganized. So until then, guys, I uh, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Good day. God bless.